Hello and welcome to Math Made Easy with Bunolom Klo. In today's lesson, we will be learning how to graph quadratic functions. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure to click that bell button and the subscribe button and stay tuned because before the end of the lesson, I'm going to make sure that I'm giving you tips on how to use the calculator in order to do the graph. So the calculator can basically do some graph for you. So make sure to stay tuned until the end of the lesson. Let's go ahead and look at our graph. Okay, the words that you are going to learn for today is what is a quadratic function, the quadratic form, linear term, constant term, parabola, axis of symmetry, vertex, maximum, and minimum value. So these are the words that you're going to know by the end of this lesson. The outcomes is to learn graphing quadratic function. So we are going to learn how to graph quadratic function. And we are going to find and interpret the maximum and the minimum value of our quadratic function so let's look at the key concept because i believe that before you can learn anything in mathematics before you can go into graphing it and mastering the calculation you always need to understand the words so a quadrat a quadratic function is a function with the greatest exponent of two so our greatest exponent is two as you can see here this function can have the first term as the quadratic term. So ax squared is our first term and it is our quadratic term. And then the second term is our linear term bx. And the last term is our constant term, which is c. When we have the graph, as you've seen in the first slide, the graph, we call it a parabola. So our graph is called the parabola. Now we are given graph a quadratic function by using a table. So we are told to graph it by using a table. So let's try to do that. The first thing that most people ask me is, where do I start with the table? Do I start at minus 10? Do I start at negative 3? Where do I start? And the answer is, you start by finding the vertex. So you find the vertex and the vertex is going to help you to find the other things. Let's look at our graph. So this is our A. So three is our A. 12 minus 12 is our B. And six is our C, okay? As you can see there. So to find your vertex, you use the formula X is equal to minus B over two A. So your B is minus 12. So you will put minus and then minus 12 which gives you positive, and then 2 multiplied by 3. 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. So 12 divided by 6 is 2. So your vertex x value is 2. And then you will take the 2, plug it into the equation. So you will have like y, your y value is 3 into 2 squared minus 12. Then you put your 2 again, and then plus... 6. Put this in your calculator and you will get negative um, you will get negative 6 as your y value. So your vertex is 2 and minus 6. So this we're going to use it as our middle point in our table so that we can put two values before 2 and two values after 2. That will give us a clear picture of where we need to start with our graph. Okay, okay, so let's go ahead and do our table. Our table, we can do the table like this. You can use it, you can do a vertical table, you can do a horizontal table. It's up to you, whichever one you're comfortable with. Okay, so I will divide my table. Okay, divide the table. Okay, so the middle term, as I said, will be 2 and negative 6. 
We already found that. And then here is our X values and here is our Y values. So you need to do two values before two values before your middle value, which is one and zero. And then here you will go with three and um, four. Okay. So when you plug in zero into this equation, you will get six. When you plug in one, you will get minus three. When you plug in three, you will get negative three again. And when you plug in four, you will get six. So we will try to make our graph now. And we draw it like this, sorry, like this. Okay, we'll give the drawing. Okay, so we saw that our highest value is six and our lowest value is, um, it's better if you have a graphing paper, but if not, just try to uh, compromise. So I'll just make two, four, six, and then negative two, negative four, negative six, and then here also negative two, I mean two, so this is positive two this side, okay, four, and then six, negative two, negative four, and negative six. Now let's go ahead and make our graph. Okay, so now we can use uh, our points there. When x is zero, y is six, so that is the first point for our graph. Here is the first point. When x is 1, so 1 is somewhere here, y is negative 3, so our point is here. When x is 2, y is negative 6, our point will be here. When x is 3, y is negative 3, it is here. When x is 4, y will be 6 again. So there are our points, we just have to join them. Join the points, okay, you join your points like that, and there you go, you have your parabola, and it's done, and it's plotted, okay, cool, so let's go ahead and try this example on our own, and if you get the correct answer, do indicate in the comments that, yes, I got the correct answer, and if not, tell me where you went wrong, and we can try to solve it again so about another key concept which is the axis of symmetry so when you have your graph like any graph that you have for instance i'll just try to draw the graph here and draw it here okay this is our parabola we have a line here which divides our graph into congruent parts so two congruent parts it makes this side equal to that. It's like the two graphs, you can fold it in between and you must get exactly congruent parts. So this is the axis of symmetry. This line is called the axis of symmetry and it's given, of course, by the equation x is equal to minus b over 2a. So the x value that you get is this um, line over here. And then if you get the y value, so the coordinate of the x value, when you have the x and the y value, this will give you what we call a vertex. So this is the vertex. The vertex is the x and the y value. So after you found the x value and you find the y value, that is called our vertex. And our vertex is over here. Okay. So now here is a question. Find the axis of symmetry the y-intercept, and the vertex of your graph. So we want you to find the three things in your graph. So firstly, we will start with the y-intercept because it's always easy. Our y-intercept is equal to our c. So y is equal to minus 3. So this is the c value and this is our y-intercept. Simply because you put 0 here, 0 here, and then you'll be left with minus 3 for your y-intercept. So you are done with the y-intercept. Okay, so y-intercept. Done with the first stuff. Done with this. Now we come to the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry, we know the formula, is minus b 
x is equal to minus b over 2 and then a. So our b is minus 4 and then divided by 2 and then uh, 1. So it's like 2 divided by 4, which will give us negative 2. So that is our vertex. Okay. Now our, then we have the, I mean, this is our x of symmetry. To find the vertex, we already have the x value of the vertex. Now we just plug it in here and we say y is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 3. So y will be equal to minus 2 squared plus 4 minus 2 minus 3. So y will be equal to, let's calculate that, our y value is, our y value is minus uh, 7. So our y value is minus 7. Okay, so this is our vertex. Our vertex is minus 2 and minus 7. Okay, so we are done with this. You can go ahead and try the example. Here they say find the y-intercept. Uh, your y-intercept is... So this is another way that you can graph even using this. So your y-intercept, y-intercept, y is equal to 6. Your axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry is given by x equal to minus b over 2a. Okay, it is minus and then minus 10 divided by 2 multiplied by minus 5. Okay, so your answer will be negative 1. Ten, so it will be positive 10 divided by 10, which is negative 1. Okay, now you will substitute your negative 1 and it will give you y is equal to minus 5, negative 1 squared, minus 10, negative 1, plus 6. Okay, you go ahead, you plug in minus 5, minus 1 squared, minus 10 minus 1 plus 6. That will give you 11. So your vertex is minus 1, 11. Okay? Right. Let's move to the last concept, which is knowing if your graph, like now we are interpreting the graph, knowing if the graph has a maximum value or the minimum value, okay? If your A is greater than zero and your A is less than zero. So if your A is greater than zero, that means your graph is like this. It's positive. It's a smiley face, okay? And that means you have a minimum value. You can see it's the smallest value that your graph can have. So this is minimum. Okay? And then if your graph is less than zero, that means you have a negative value, it will be a set phase and that will give you a maximum value. Maximum. Okay? Now let's look at this graph. Determine whether the function has a minimum or maximum value. We're not going to do a lot of things. We're just going to say if it has a maximum or minimum value. So our a, a is equal to negative 4, and that means a is less than 0. And that means we don't know the other, we are not looking for other things, we just know that our graph will be like this, 
and therefore it will have what? It will have a maximum value. Maximum value. Okay? So that's, um, that's all for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed and please do subscribe and do like. And now we will move on to our bonus tip. Okay, we will look at the last graph, which is the one here where you are given minus 4 x squared plus 12 x plus 18. So you are given this graph and you want to know how can you, um, how can you make your values so that you can be able to just get it so quick. So using this calculator, you can just press mode. There's a button mode. And then you press 7. You press 7 because it says table. You have something called f of x. And you insert your graph, which is minus 4. Then you put your x value, x squared plus 12 plus 18. Okay. And then this is your equation. It's there. You say equal. You start at, I will start at negative 3. And uh, end at negative, uh, at positive 3. End at positive 3. And my steps is 1. So there you will get your table. There you will get your table. Your table will give you all the values of your graph. So that is your bonus tip for this vi uh, video. And please stay tuned for the other videos. Bye.